So now we're going to learn about HP architecture. And uh, you could Google HTTP request specification. So you could just run that at Google. And I did that. And some of the stuff you'll get back is from the W3 and the IETF. And the W3 is the World Wide Web Consortium, sometimes referred to as the W3C. And so we could just go take a look at the www3.org. And so these are people who help create the standards for the web, W3C, World Wide Web Consortium. And then the IETF, IETF.org, Internet Engineering Task Force. So that's pretty self-explanatory, right? They do stuff to engineer the Internet. And, uh, and then you could read about this stuff. You could also Google HP status codes, and you get, like, you know, things about status codes. So request specification status codes. And um, and then at this link right here, so this is like section two from right here when I was looking at the request specification, there's some cool stuff here. And so this really kind of gives you an idea of how HTTP works. So pretty dense reading. But when I started reading it, I was like, yeah, I need to keep reading. <laughs> it's like nice. If you're into this stuff, it's interesting. And so I, I took some of that text there, right, from RFC 7230, June 2014, and I put it here, and I, I made some capitalized words, which I wanted to stand out and highlight. So we're just going to take a second and read through this together, and if anybody has questions as we're going through it together, um, let's just stop, because I think it's really helpful to help you understand that request response pattern and some of the terminology that you come into. HP was created for the World Wide Web architecture and has evolved over time to support the scalability needs of a worldwide hypertext system. Much of that architecture is reflected in the terminology and syntax productions used to define HTTP. So client-server messaging. HTTP is a stateless request-response protocol that operates by exchanging messages across a reliable transport or session layer connection. Okay. So last week, you know, in my bumbling before I decided I was way too tired and hungry to continue trying to explain it, I was like, have you guys, you guys know about the Aussie model, OC model, whatever, All right? And so that's just like a networking kind of model for the different layers, application, presentation, session, transport, network, data, physical. And it was just saying, hey, this is, HTTP is a stateless request response protocol that operates by exchanging messages across a reliable transport or session layer connection. Transport or session, session, transport. And when we looked at that at Wiki, Aussie Wiki, right, we transport or session, so here's transport and session. Transport, TCP, right? And, and then session is something else, you know. And then up here we have HTTP. And so HTTP is riding on the back of TCP, which is riding on the back of IP Internet Protocol, IP, right? And so, okay, cool. So when we get into looking at, oh, how do we, how do we actually make servers work, like build one from the ground up, we're going to first look at TCP. Why? Because an HTTP server is actually just a TCP server. And so we're going to be using functionality related to TCP. And then we'll just, you know, make it respond to web requests in a web way. So you just kind of have to understand that, like, HTTP is built on top of TCP. And that's built on top of Internet Protocol. And these are just different layers that people think about when building networks. Just like when computers are built, you got your hardware. And then the next layer on top of that is your operating system. And then the next layer on top of that is your application software. Right? Here you've got your hardware, which is the physical. And then you start layering on stuff on top of that. Same way. Okay? So that's what that means here. And this is actually saying HTTP runs on TCP. An HTTP client is a program that establishes a connection to a server for the purpose of sending one or more HTTP requests. Yeah, so a client establishes a connection to a server. A server is a program that accepts connections in order to service HTTP requests by sending HTTP responses. So here we see client, server, request, response. 
Terms client server refer only to the roles that these programs perform for a particular connection. The same program might act as a client on some connections and a server on others. So some people aren't sure what is a server, you know? A server is anything that responds to a request. And so in peer-to-peer -peer networking, you could be a client or a server in the same 10 minutes, right? I'm making a request for something. Now somebody's asking me for something. I'm serving that back. Uh, it's just kind of interesting. Uh, the term user agent, so you'll see user agent a lot, right, refers to any of the various client programs that initiate a request, including but not limited to browser spiders, which are web-based robots, command line tools, custom applications, and mobile apps. The term origin server refers to the program that can originate authoritative responses for a given target resource. So you go to this domain at this URL with this route, Right, and that server can respond. And it's interesting to use the term origin server because when we're in GitHub and you know we you know connect to our stuff, right? So git status not able to read current working directory. I am in oh I've changed stuff. Now get status. <laughs> can last. And so what's this say? You know, uh, changes to be committed, changes, so git add dash dash all, and git status. All right, now they're all ready. Git, uh, git commit dash m, and oh, your branch is up to date with origin master. Ah, interesting. And I've always said, well, the origin is like the origin from which you get everything. It's the, and it's interesting to see that same terminology here. The origin server, right? Ah, interesting, right? Just, I don't know. I'm just going to finish this up. Uh, solution. Good question. That's always a good commit message. So the term origin server refers to program that could respond. The term sender and recipient refer to any implementation that sends or receives a given message re respectively. All right. HP relies upon the uniform resource identifier. So we may have heard of them as URLs, uniform resource locator. Pretty much like a uniform resource identifier, that seems to be the term that really technical people use instead of URL. Uh, and maybe it refers to something slightly different. Uh, standard to indicate the target resource and relationships between resources. Messages are passed in a format similar to that used by internet mail and multi-purpose internet mail extensions. Right, MIME. Most HP communication consists of retrieval request. So retrieval request, which means I'm making a git request, meaning get me that page, please, server. OK, here's that page. For a representation of some resource identified by URL, URI, in the simplest case, this might be accomplished via a single bidirectional connection between the user agent and the origin server. OK, so it's a pretty complicated way to say that like, I'm going to a web page and the server responds, right? But it's user agent and origin server. It's a request and it's a response. And you can see a little, you know, command line graphic of that there. Anybody finding this helpful? Anybody not? Good. A client sends a request to server in the form of a request message, beginning with the request line. And we just saw that. That includes a method, right? Like git or post is the method. The URI, uh, which would be like, you know, just the root or root forward slash me or we are doing root forward slash dog, right? And uh, so the method, the URI, and the protocol version, HTTP 1.1, followed by header fields, right? So we have all of our header stuff and we have, what was it, the key value. So, you know, we did content type text plain or text HTML. Containing request modifier, so modifies the request, client information, and representation metadata, an empty line to indicate the end of the header section, and finally a message body containing the payload body, if any. A server mess responds to a client's request by sending one or more HP response messages, each beginning with a status line that includes the protocol version. So the protocol version would be HTTP 1.1, a success or error code, 200 and a textual uh, reason, success, or phrase, possibly followed by header fields containing server information, resource metadata, an empty line to indicate the end of the header section, and finally a message body containing the payload body. 
So this is all written here, and you could take this, and just like we did with Nina's program, and I did right up here when I set the, the, that one response header to content type text plain, you could just create all that and send it back. Like you don't need Ruby to like do everything for you because you've entered some esoteric command. It's like I'm going to look at the engineering, Internet Engineering Task Force document and now I'm just going to create that with code and send it back from my server. Okay, cool. A connection might be used for multiple request response exchanges. The following example illustrates a typical message exchanged for a GET request on the URI that route. And so here, you know, is the method. The URI is at, you know, this host, give me that path, and then HTTP version, the user agent, and then server response, HTTP version, the status code, and then some phrase, right? Everything's okay. I wanted to get HTTP 200. I thought that'd be a cooler license plate, but it is taken. All right, like, hey, everything's okay, HTTP 200. So I had to go 301. And then, you know, other other headers there, right? And then here is the space, the line between the end of the header section, and there's the payload, right? So it goes on, and I highlighted some of it. There's just more stuff about user agents, HTTP origin servers, and then there's some interesting other things down here which aren't going to be talked about. But... Uh, you know, some night, uh, get yourself like a nice warm glass of uh, bourbon <laughs> and uh, read that <laughs> and see how far you get before you pass out. <laughs> oh, no wonder I'm not fitting in my page. I'm all scrolled in. Anybody have questions about it?